So good to see everybody here today. Super fun to come together, and it's Christmas Eve Eve. I don't know if yesterday was Christmas Eve 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 or how far you can go with that, but we'll just stick with Christmas Eve Eve because it's fun for me. I don't know about y'all. See, Christmas is almost here. I love it because for so long we've been kind of getting ready and getting presents, kind of talking to the kids and to family members. What would you like? What do you want? What is it? Some of y'all are weird and y'all tell each other what you got each other. That's weird. Stop that. It's Christmas. I don't know why that's a thing. You wrap it for a reason. But we wrap these presents and we get them under the tree. We put the lights out. We get everything ready. We make cookies, get out the old recipes. How many of y'all do that? How many of you get out old recipes and start making stuff? All right, so there's like two of y'all. But it's super fun to kind of get back into traditions and fun things like that. And what happens is, is we get so quickly rushed into the season, right? It's like two days away. It's on Tuesday. It's Christmas. And it seems like so fast time will just move. And I guarantee you on Wednesday, you'll wake up and be like, man, that was fast. And we, we forget sometimes that Christmas was really meant to be a time for us to focus on something very in particular. And it was that Jesus was actually born for us. Christmas is a very, very special time. To imagine what actually went on when God just stepped out of heaven and said, I'm coming with a plan, and he comes to be born of a ba- as a baby. But it's so much fun just to see the nativity scenes and the presents. But I was thinking this morning as I was going to talk to you guys about Christmas and give you a message, I thought, what better... What better thing to talk about than that moment when kids are looking at the gifts under the tree so ready to open them? You guys know that anticipation, right? You know what it's like to be so excited to wake up on that morning. How many of your kids actually sleep in on Christmas morning? No, nobody raises hands. All of them wake up bright and early, sometimes a little too early. You tell them, go back to bed because they're so excited with so much anticipation. They want to open what's in the box. So I brought you a box. This thing receives so much of our focus, doesn't it? When kids walk past the tree, it's like they push it and touch it. They just want to smell it. They just want to look at it, right? It's like, get away from the present. Don't pick it up. I'll take it back. But it's just, they just see it and they want it so bad. And I thought, man, that is a perfect example for us of a story in Scripture that I found. And we've been, we've been going through the Chronicles. And we've been talking about the Ark of the Covenant and how God put his presence in the box so that the Israelites could carry it with them and he would lead them fire by night and a, a fire by night and a cloud of smoke by day. So I want us, we're going to look at 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 3. It should be on the screen for us. I'm going to read it. And it says, "Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli." So Samuel was just a small child and he was in the he was in the temple. And Eli was the priest of the day. He was old. And this is before if you've been following along our series, this is kind of before all of this is happening. Because when David was king, the priest in the tabernacle, the head priest at that time, was actually Samuel. So you're getting a look at him as a child. So we're kind of reflecting back. It says, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli. And word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. And it happened at that time as Eli was lying down in this place. Now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he could not see well. And the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Can you imagine this? It says in scripture that Samuel, as a small boy, is lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark was. Can you imagine, just like kids right now are going to be sleeping the next few nights, thinking and looking, maybe trying to get a peek out in the hallway just to see the presents underneath the tree, those gifts wrapped up beautiful. Young boy Samuel is sleeping next to the ark. Could you imagine what he is looking at right now? Can you imagine him laying down and looking at this golden, beautiful thing and the presence of God is literally contained in this moment? What kind of thoughts are running through his mind? 
That this God that so many people have fought for, so many people have carried, and so we've built so much to put him in, and we've, we've done so many things to bring the presence of God, and yet this box is right here in front of me. He could almost reach out and touch it, but he probably knows he shouldn't. You guys heard about Uzzah. Uzzah touched it. He didn't, he didn't do so well. But we're moving past that. Samuel was just a boy. He's growing up to basically work for the church. So he served there, and the scripture says that he was lying down to sleep, and he's looking at the box. Man, can you imagine the box right there, and it's God. And I think of what kind of parallel for us in a time of Christmas, just to think of ourselves as kids, to look at our own kids and how excited they are that there's a box right there, and there's something so really cool inside, and I want nothing more than to go and open this. And then I begin to think about how precious that box, the Ark of the Covenant, was for him. See, but the Ark that contained the presence of God was not the ultimate plan. That wasn't the end-all, be-all. There was more to come. But this box was really, really important. This is a gift that you can never see. This gift claims to be special for you and me. Whenever you are lonely or feeling down and out, all you have to do is hold this gift and think happy thoughts, for there is no need for a genuine expression of feeling, no need to shout. You can never unwrap it and please leave the ribbon untied and untouched. Just keep calm and chive on. Be yourself, stay sassy, eat bacon, trust your dog, have it your way and hold the box close. But there is nothing inside that is tangible. It is completely empty. Is this a gift that appeals to you? I just think of how ridiculous that even sounds. That for so many of us, we look at our faith, we look at, we look at, like God, and we think that like, nah, he, he's just something just to kind of have around sometimes. The thought is that if we had a present for our kid, we said, you don't get to open it. Just, just so you know I love you, it's there, but there's really nothing to it. When we, when we put something in a box and we wrap it and we, and we know that it contains something we love so much and we want to give it to somebody, it's meant to be opened. That gift is meant so that one day we could just rip open that box and enjoy what's inside. But if all we ever do is we just take this gift that God has given us and we just set it in front of us and be like, I know that in times of trouble I can go and just hold the box again. But if I really began to unpack all that God has done, all that God has brought to me, then things are going to get messy. So I just need to leave it all wrapped up and nice in a nice religious little box. You see, it wasn't meant to be this way. If I think back to the, the way that God really intended for his presence, he actually created Adam and Eve, and it says that God walked with them, that his presence was there with them. But then sin comes along, and we mess things up. So God, never wanting to leave us, never wanting to abandon us, created a plan, and he says, I tell you what, I can put my presence in a box. I have to protect you, but I can put it in a box, and you can carry it with you, and I will lead you because I want so bad to be with you. I'll do whatever it takes, but he knew that that wouldn't be it. He knew just like kids when they see a present under the tree that there has to be a moment that the box gets opened. There must be a time. So God knew what was coming. He had a plan the whole time, and Adam and Eve walking with him was the plan. Just like foretelling here, Jesus was coming. There was a day and a time when God would step out of the box, and his son Jesus would come with us. Because the presence, it's all about God's presence. There's something else at the beginning of this verse that I was reading, and it says that the boy Samuel was ministering before the Lord, and it says, And word from the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were infrequent. I want to know how many of you have ever felt like God speaking to you is rare, if at all. 
Maybe you've heard in that still small voice at one time in your heart, but that was so long ago you forgot. Maybe you once had a dream or once had a vision that God had put in your heart of what he wanted you to accomplish, and you're just like, man, it's, it's gone. I haven't heard God for such a long time. In a time and a season where Samuel was just a boy and it says that words were infrequent, something really beautiful in the next verses shows up. It says in 1 Samuel 3, 4 that the Lord called Samuel and then Samuel says, here I am. You see, he was willing. Samuel wanted to know, well, he would sit right in the presence of God. And so many of us, we think of God like it's a box, like it's just religion that we can put on a shelf. Don't unwrap it. Don't mess with it. When times are tough, go look at the box to know God loves you. But he says to open the box, to allow for his love to come into your life. And so often we just put it back on the shelf. We put it back under the tree and say, no, I don't need to open it. I don't want to mess with that. I just need to know you're here for me. He says, but open it. Just open the box. I know that hearing from me maybe seem rare, but just step into my presence. Be willing to step into my presence. Sit with me. Let me speak to you. He's been longing to talk to you for a very long time. See, we talked about in Chronicles how this, this Ark of the Covenant got lost. The people of Israel literally lost the box that contained God. They go off to war, they did some things they shouldn't have done, and they, the enemy takes, the, takes it away. And what happened was, and what we find out, is that God's presence was not their priority. They would run off to war and do their own thing, and they would try to add God in on the back end of it. How many of you have ever gone off and done something you shouldn't have done, and you thought, oh, God, will you show up now at least and fix it? How many times have we just taken a job and then prayed, God, make this job work? And he's like, well, I could have told you it wasn't like a week ago. We just rush out there and rush out there and never ask God to come. And we invite his presence into every day, into every moment. We just want to leave it all wrapped up, nice and religious and pretty, and just set it there back under the tree. How ridiculous is it to think that we would just leave boxes under the tree December 26th? 27th, the kids are like, can we open them now? No, nah. just know I love you. It's waiting for you. Next Christmas. But God wanted to get things back on the plan. He needed the presence of God to come out of the box. That is Emmanuel, God with us. You see, he began, he stepped out and he stepped down to us. He said, it's time there was an appointed time and place for this to happen. He wasn't going to leave us alone. His presence was going to come in the baby of Jesus to be raised up to show us how to live a life. His presence came so not that we could just know that God loved us back then, and He was, but he so loved the world that he gave his only son, and he came on a day that the world began to rejoice. Do you rejoice for the presence? Do you rejoice when God shows up? Do you rejoice on Christmas saying, thank you, Jesus, for what you did for me? Or sometimes do we just step back and say, like, man, that was a really busy, se busy season. God, next year, show up. Matthew 2.11, it says, after coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell to the ground and they worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. It sounds just like Christmas. That when they saw Jesus, they fell down and they worshiped and they presented gifts. And the only, the only response we should ever have at Christmas is we just fall down and we just worship Jesus. So we just, we're just, yeah. So as of right now, I want it just to sit for a moment. I want, this is going to be a time of reflection. I want you just to imagine what it was like when somebody saw Jesus for the first time. Close your eyes and just, just let your imagination run for a second. And imagine just watching these, these shepherd boys and these, and these men from afar. They would come and they brought gifts and they were so excited about the presence of God that just worship broke out. And I'm sure they began to sing and they'd sing and they'd sing and just let this wash over you.
scripture said that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we saw his glory glory is the only begotten from the father full of grace and truth see the word dwelt was the word for tabernacle that just as the young boy Samuel would just sleep in that room in the tabernacle right next to the presence of God that the purpose of Jesus coming was to be the tabernacle to literally be the presence of God that would come to be with us so that we make him our priority we no longer need religion just a system of like making sure I go to church and do the devotions just right but that it becomes all about his consuming presence that leads us and guides us and invites us into everything that he has for us. So many of us, so often we get so focused on just the regimented things to do. I need to do this. I need to do that. I've got to go this way and do this. I got to make sure I showed up on church. How many of you have ever not done your devotions and thought I failed God? I failed him. I didn't show up to church. It's ruined. I did something that I shouldn't have done. God doesn't love me. I have to go get cleaned up before I get back in his presence. Can I tell you that is wrong? That is a lie straight from the enemy. All he ever wanted was for you just to sit with him in his presence. And he fought so hard to get out of the box to come be with you, to come just be with you in a moment. And it came on a Christmas day as a small child, different than anything ever, anybody ever thought. I hope today is different than you thought it was going to be because we will always make his presence our priority. His presence will be your priority. His presence is gonna be my priority. And the only response we have is complete adoration and worship. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've gone through. It doesn't matter if you've messed up. He died for that. That was the purpose. Give him all of that stuff. Don't hold on to it any longer. So when you come to a time and a place like this, when you think, man, Christmas is so good, I challenge you today, I want you to unwrap the box of his presence and let him just wash over your life. Glory to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. This is a gift sent down from heaven. Can you hear the angels sing? This gift chose to come down and leave his throne on high and to lay down his very life for you and I and hung on a tree to die. This gift came to redeem, to set free, to bring near, to wipe away every fear and every tear from every heart and eye. I must also imply this gift is more than just to look at from a distance. He came to inhabit every human life. A life worth living, a life forgiven from all the sinning, from all the brokenness, pain, shame, and hopelessness. This is our beginning. This gift is not a package that you can't open. He is this gift each human receives on a personal level. Perk up your ears to this wonderful truth spoken. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the man with a plan, has called your name. Christmas stands for Christ. Christmas stands for life. Christmas stands for true love. No darkness can extinguish its light. Hey you, yes you the one hearing my voice, don't let today slip by without making him Lord of your life. Now it's up to you. What is gonna be your choice? So you get to respond. I'm gonna ask my prayer team to come down and just come up front and today what I want is I want for you if at some moment during this time, God has laid something on your heart 
and you felt the stirring of the Spirit like you've never felt before, there's something inside your heart is just racing and God is calling you and you know that that still small voice is there and it's starting to get louder and it's starting to get louder and it's starting to get louder. I want today to be the day that you choose to open that gift of salvation and come and say, I need Jesus in my life. I don't want to go through another Christmas with an unopened box. I want today to be the day. So if that is you, I actually want you to get up out of your seat and come see somebody down front. I don't believe in secrecy, trying to secretly usher anybody into the kingdom of God because when, the, when they came to worship, I gotta imagine it was a loud worship. It wasn't just quiet and just humble and rare. You know, I'm sure it was great, but I'm sure they let the neighbors know that Jesus had come. So if he is speaking to you, I want you to come right now. Don't waste any more time. Don't let another day pass. Just come right now and say, I want that gift. I don't know all the stuff about it. I haven't really read the Bible. It doesn't matter. His presence is waiting on you.